Hey North Coast, Chris Oaken here bringing you the Daily Dose. Uh, and kind of on a weird topic, uh, they charged me with trying to find a hidden gem throughout the Bible that people don't talk about often, and so I'm, I'm going to try to do that today. Do you have anywhere in your life where it could be a... It, someone just, just wronged you. They just did something that... But they're, they're just getting away with it. You know, they... they did something either inappropriate or hurtful maliciously or it might have been benign it, you don't know but all you know is they you want to take revenge you want to take vengeance you want to get back at them and most of us when we're talking about this like we almost always have someone in our mind that immediately is triggered about that who is it that you feel like man I, if only I could then there's these little hints in scripture where God calls himself holy that means separate it's greater than it's it's the idea of him being um, so much more powerful and so much greater. He's, he's more loving than us. He's more, but it also goes on the idea that he is, his vengeance is better than ours. His repayment is better than ours. His, uh, his protection of us is better than we can protect ourselves. And, and the notion is when we take vengeance on ourselves, then we actually incur judgment on ourselves. But when we let God do it, he's almost always more creative and he gets to the point much stronger than we even could. And it's, it's what Romans 12 says where, God says, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. So don't don't worry about it. It's, it's not your job. Um, and then Romans 8, 31 talks about that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For if our God is for us, then who could be against us? And when the Bible asks obvious questions, it wants obvious answers. So who could be against us? Well, no one. And with all that in mind, we get to, to the book of 2 Kings chapter 2. There's a man named Elijah. He is one of God's prophets. In a really crazy time for prophets, there's a division of the northern and southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom, basically run by pagans, they create a new temple and they, they sacrifice pigs and all this weird stuff that God doesn't want any part of. It, but they have practiced this pseudo-religion. And then God sends this man named Elisha to them to correct them. But he had just sent a man named Elijah to them. And Elijah, at the end of his life, was taken up in a whirlwind. You know, he's taken up into heaven. Swing low, sweet chariots coming forth to carry me home. That's about Elijah being taken up into heaven. Now his predecessor, Elisha, is walking around very distraught, very broken, and to this pagan nation. And here's what happens. It says, from there, Elisha went up to Bethel, uh, which is one of the places where they were worshiping uh, in a fake way. They were using a false temple worship. As he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and jeered him. The word here in this section for, for boys is katan na'ar, which, which has the idea of grown men who act like children. So don't think of it like these aren't preschoolers walking around. Um, it's the same word that's used for, uh, for Joseph when he was in captivity. It's the same word for Solomon when he asked for wisdom in the middle of his 20s. It's people who presently are grown men, but they act like children. Some, some of these men, some grown-up uh, boys, came out of the town and jeered at him. Get out of here, you baldy, they said. Go on up. Uh, so they're, actually, they're mocking. They're like, just do what Elijah did. Just get out of here like a chariot of fire. Let it take you up. Get out of here. He turned around, looked at them, and then he gave it over to God. He says, it says, then he cursed them in the name of the Lord. So he basically went, you know what, God? It, it, it just, I, I, I don't have time. Just do whatever you want to do. And sometimes... You know, God's silent. It's like, well, it'll it'll be at a certain time or in a certain place. But other times in Scripture, God's God's vengeance is immediate. And here's one where it's immediate. It says this. He turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of them. And then he continued on to Mount Carmel from there and returned to Samaria. It's like, <laughs> it's like the, we just missed these places in Scripture. Two bears come out of the woods... One of the sections says two female bears, so <laughs> mama wasn't happy. Two female bears come out of the woods and mauled. It didn't say it killed them. It just, it, the idea is like basically to cut something open. <laughs> 42 of the youths. And he went on to Mount Carmel from there, returned to Samaria. And, and, and for me, it's, the, the, nothing in my paradigm says that this part of scripture is telling us we need to call down curses on people more often. But there is a sense that we get sometimes of when we feel like God is absent or God isn't there that we got to remind ourselves, when someone wrongs or someone hurts us, it's not our idea to revenge. And God's vengeance is almost always more creative. Like, I think when Elijah was saying, like, take vengeance or do something, he probably had something really pithy in mind. Certainly not two female bears. So, what if we trusted God enough that in all of our circumstances, even if they're enemies, that he is faithful to do what he said? Today, if someone's wronged you, give it over to God. We'll see you guys tomorrow.